this video, we're going to talk about everything related to manual inventory valuation. As we mentioned in previous videos, the difference between manual and automated is that manual does not reflect in real time on the balance sheet. Instead, we have to make a manual journal entry to update the value of our stock in our balance sheet periodically. So let's first look at inventory. I'm going to go to configurations and look at our product categories once again. I've created a new manual inventory valuation. We're using inventory valuation manual with, with average cost. Our default income account is product sales still, but our expense account is just going to be this generic 600 expense account. I have one product in our manual inventory valuation product category. And if we go to our reports, we can look at the valuation and we're going to group this by product category. And we're only going to care right now about our manual inventory valuation, which is set to 500. Now, if I go to our balance sheet in accounting, we'll see that our balance right now in our manual stock valuation account, which I set for all of our product categories, uh, for our manual product categories, which I created manually here, is $500. So that matches currently with our valuation report, but that did not happen automatically. We manually adjusted our stock valuation. So now what we're gonna do is go through that flow and then we're gonna make some sales and see how we can correct our valuation on our balance sheet based on the difference between what we purchased and what we sold to make sure that we update our cost of revenue appropriately. Now let's begin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is purchase some goods. So I'm gonna purchase this from vendor one. I'm gonna add that manual product four. And let's say that we're going to purchase 50 units. So that's going to increase our valuation by 250. So I'm going to confirm this and we'll simply receive the products and validate. Now we're receiving that inventory in our system. We can create a bill for this. And one thing that I want to point out as soon as I confirm this bill, we're going to look at our journal items. In our journal items, the only thing that happens is our expense account, that default expense account that we have on our product category, gets debited and our accounts payable account gets credited. Now what we care about right here is this expense account because this is not necessarily an expense. This is an asset that we need to record as such. And because we're doing manual inventory valuation, we have to at some point make a manual journal entry to correct this and move this into either an asset account or a cost of goods account if we have already sold these units that we just purchased. So now if I go into my inventory and look at my valuation report, and I'm going to group this by product category, we'll see that our man manual inventory valuation is set at 750, which is accurate. And if I go to accounting and I go into my balance sheet, my stock valuation account for manual only shows 500 as we suspect because we do not have automated turned on. But if I go to my profit and loss statement, we have some expenses set at $250 for the expense of the product that we just purchased. But as I mentioned, we need to adjust this at some point. But first, let's make a sale. So now I'm going to go into sales. I'm going to create a new sale. We'll create a new customer. We'll just call it customer one. And I'm going to sell product four. And we'll add some units here. Let's say we're going to sell 10 units. So now I'm going to simply confirm this. We can deliver the goods and we can create an invoice for our customer. And we'll just simply confirm this invoice. We're not too concerned with this right now, but as you can see in manual inventory valuation, we just credit our product sales and debit our accounts receivable. So there's no cost of goods recorded either. That's where our manual inventory comes in, where we need to adjust and make a manual journal entry to record our cost of goods sold and adjust our assets and expenses. So let's do that now. The first number we need is in inventory. We need to go to our valuation once again. We're going to group this by product category, and we're going to get the total only for our manual inventory valuation, which is 700. So we can remember that is 700. Next, we're going to go into our accounting. We're going to go to our balance sheet and we're going to receive and remember that our stock valuation account is currently at 500. 
perfect. Now the last thing we need is in our profit and loss statement, we're gonna get the expense account. Of course, we can go to our general ledger to get these numbers, but I'm just going into the respective reports. And we have this value at 250. So we need those three numbers in order to understand or to get our actual cost of revenue. So now let's create a journal entry and we're gonna create a manual journal entry. This is, can just be for um, you know, manual inventory adjustment, say cost adjustment. So then we need to make a journal entry. The first account we're going to hit is our stock valuation manual. And that should, the, we should debit this account for the current valuation based on our valuation report. And that was 700. And that came from our inventory reports, valuation, group by product category, looking for that value, which is debit of 700. Next, what we're gonna do is credit our expense account for the balance in the expense account. Because those are not expenses, those are assets, we need to offset that. So what we're gonna do is take that entire amount, which is $250. And next, what we're gonna do is also credit our stock valuation. So this is going to be our manual stock valuation. And we could move this over so we can see more. And I'll just remove some of these other items so we can make this more clear. And let me move this over. All right, so now that we can see everything on screen, right now what we have is 700 in our stock valuation account, $250 which we've seen in our expense account. And what this credit is actually going to be is the current balance in our stock valuation, which is 500. Now we could have netted these out, the stock valuation, but I think this is easier to view. So we have what our current, so if, just, if we wanna label this, we can say current, stock valuation report. This is gonna be current balance in account. This is gonna be current balance in account. And the next line that we're gonna do is our cost of revenue. And the difference or the delta between our debits and credits is going to be what should, be, should have been recorded as our cost of revenue. So now we're gonna put this into our cost of goods sold and we have the accurate number, which is $50. So now we're gonna save this and we're gonna post our entry and we're gonna make sure everything is accurate. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our balance sheet. We have our stock valuation manual, which holds $700. This should match our stock valuation in inventory. We have our profit and loss statement, which will accurately display our $50 for cost of goods sold because we sold 10 units at $5. And now if we go into inventory and we go to reports and we go to valuation, same as before, we'll see a $700 balance in our manual inventory valuation, which will reflect the, the balance sheet. 